on the same. In fact, a really good weighted coin, if you if like somebody wanted to cheat like a, a gambling game or something like that, a really good weighted coin is actually not completely weighted on one side. It just more often falls on the side you want it to than the other side. It's not like it's always tails. It would be like 75% of the time it would be tails. See what I mean? They have weighted loaded dice too. All right, go get a prize, Jamie. You can have a tattoo if you want. Yeah, sure. Okay, the multiplication rule. We're almost done. Multiplication rule is um, uh, the probability of A and the probability of B happening is the same thing as the probability of A times the probability of B. So if I say what's the chances of this happening and then what's the chances of this happening, you just multiply the probabilities together and you'll know what, what's the probability of both of them happening. So two cards are selected. Without replacing the first card <coughs> from a standard deck of 52 playing cards, find the probability of selecting a king and and then selecting a queen. Okay, so we've got a king, and then we're gonna multiply by the probability of getting a queen. So what's the probability of getting a king? Four out of 52. Four out of 52. Four out of 52. And Triton, what's the probability of getting a queen? Four out of 52. But we threw away the card. We threw away the king. Because it says away. without replacing the first card. So like we took the king and we didn't put it back. Good. Do you guys know how to multiply fractions together? Mm -hmm. What do you do? The, top the tops get multiplied and the bottoms get multiplied. So the top would be 16. I have no idea what 52 times 51 is. Yeah, my 2,652. Yeah. And then if we divide those two, because I would strongly suggest you not leave a fraction like this. Um, because you can see right now that they're both the top and the bottom are both divisible by two, right? Do you want to go through the time to figure out exactly how to reduce that fraction? I don't. So let's just put it down. If you do 16 divided by 2,652, it is 0.006. So the chances of you pulling a king and then pulling a queen in that order is 0.006 or 0.6%. So you could also move the decimal twice and say this is 0.6%. Same thing. That makes sense to you guys? All right, try the second one for a prize. I think we're going to make tomorrow a work day, and maybe we'll cut up the boards then. And then the next day we'll play deal or no deal, okay? So this is still, this assignment at the end is still going to be due on, well, we'll probably make it due Friday because Thursday we'll be obsessed with playing deal or no deal. I think that's reasonable, yeah? Okay. Who wants in? One, two, three. You already won, right? Yes. So three so far. If they can't get it, I'll give it to you. One. So how I did it, I don't know if you did it. Mm -hmm. The chances of a coin being tossed and you being heads is one out of two. Mm -hmm. And then for the dice, this is a six sided die. So one out of six, so one out of six. And you multiply the two, which will equal one twelve. Perfect. And 112 is a great answer by itself because you know that's reduced. So great job. Get a prize. You could also say that is 0 0.083. Um, you could also say that's about 8.3%. I'll get a tattoo. 
Yeah. All right, we'll do that in a few minutes. You allow me to get on my forehead? Yep. 100% yes. Sure enough. Wouldn't expect anything less than you from you. All right, we have one more example to get through, and then we'll put a tattoo on Triton, because we're all interested in that, right? Yeah. Okay, so ACL reconstructive surgery. Has anybody had ACL surgery? Does anybody know anybody who's had ACL surgery? Okay, anybody know who's had a, an unsuccessful ACL surgery? Does happen. Yeah, no, as in like they have to go back for a second surgery without the person actually doing intense damage themselves. I mean, maybe like they were just walking and they retore it, but if they're doing something extreme and retore it, like you could do that with a healthy one. So, anyway, uh, apparently there's a 95% chance that a surgery is successful when it's an ACL. By the way, all of the stats that I give you that are coming up in this chapter are all accurate. Nothing is made up. I'll let you know if something is made up, okay? Um, so an ACL surgery, probability that the surgery is successful is 95% chance. Is that a good chance? Yeah, i do it, right? Like, I mean, like, if somebody was like, hey, you can't walk, or here's a surgery with a 95% chance of success, great, let's do it. What's your chances of failure then? 5%. Find the probability that three AL surgeries are successful in a row. Now, something this is not accounting for is the fact that sur to be a surgeon is skill, right? And do you think that some surgeons are better than others? Yes. yes. So some surgeons have generally a higher probability of success than other people. And also, sometimes somebody's body determines whether it is a success or failure, like an exact way that they tore it or something that they're having problems with. It's the person that they're operating on, not necessarily the operator. Um, but generally, it's 95% success. So if we want three of them to be successful, we're saying, okay, the first one was 95% chance of success. What's the second one? 95. 95. Now, before we multiply these out in your calculator, can you tell me this right now? Look at me. Is it going to be more likely or less likely that a surgeon would do three in a row that are successful? Less likely, right? So the probability is going to go down. Is it going to be really low? No. no. Okay. So if you put it in your calculator, 0.95 to the power of 3, or just 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95, you get 0.857. So the chances that they would have three successful surgeries in a row are 0.857. What's the probability that none of them are successful? What's the probability that a surgery is not successful? 5%, 0 0.05. All of them have to be unsuccessful. So I'm going to write down three 0.05s in a row. Now, when I put that in my calculator, I get this. Can you remind me what that means? 1.25e to the negative 4, Emma? It's like the sign of multiplication. So that means you, since you get negative 4, you move the decimal towards both sides. Left, yep. So if it was 1.25, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, put your point, so that is what, three zeros in front of it? So point zero 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 one two five. we'll just write down the whole thing. 